Yo, what's up guys? It's Jeff from Updated and today Apple released the official version of iOS 15.1. Now this update brings a lot of changes and new features that we've been expecting after the official release of iOS 15. And we'll get into those changes in just a bit, but today Apple also released the official versions of iPadOS 15.1, uh, watchOS 8.1, tvOS 15.1, and HomePod OS 15.1. Now, as far as the update details for today's release, we have an update size of 5.126 gigabytes for my iPhone 13 Pro Max. And then when it comes to a build number, the official build number is 19B74. Now, as far as an installation time, it did take about five to seven minutes to install on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. But if you guys are trying to install this update right away, just be aware that the download times might be lengthy given a lot of other people will be trying to download uh, that process at the same time. Okay, so with that said, let's get into the new features and changes that are found in iOS 15.1. So I think it's safe to say that things are getting a little bit crazy out there when it comes to privacy and also user safety, specifically on the internet. That's why Trend Micro has sponsored this video, which has given me the awesome opportunity to use their antivirus software for Mac. Now through this software, I can block any virus whatsoever, even ransomware. And I can also avoid scam or phishing emails. And I am protected against dangerous websites that will likely be selling my personal data. Now, what's also really important is Trend Micro updates their databases regularly and ensures that you are protected against the latest threats, which means your antivirus software from Trend Micro never goes out of date. So if you want to feel safer on the internet, we all know that's a very scary place, and know that you are protected, check out the Trend Micro antivirus software via the link in the video description below. Okay, so when you first install iOS 15.1, you will be uh, kind of welcomed with the welcome screen, the traditional iOS 15 welcome screen that has the different languages and it's kind of a revamped look to uh, Apple's welcome screen. So you will see that. And then obviously uh, a very short setup process when it comes to iOS 15.1. Now, when you do first install iOS 15.1 onto your iDevice, if you go into general and then about, obviously you will have a new build number, um, but with that build number, you will have modem firmware as well. Uh, with iOS 15.1 specifically, we have 1.15.02, and this is specifically for my iPhone 13 Pro Max. If you have a device that is not an iPhone 13 Pro Max, like an iPhone 13 Pro, or maybe an iPhone 12 Pro uh, device, the modem firmware will be different because there is a different modem in that device. So just be aware of that. If your uh, firmware doesn't match up with mine, it's probably not an error. It's just because you have a different modem, which will have different modem firmware. Now, one of the features that we saw way back in the iOS 15 beta days uh, is SharePlay, and that is now coming back to our iDevices in iOS 15.1. So SharePlay allows you to share your screen with another individual that you are on a FaceTime call with, and through Apple Music as well, you can listen to music uh, with that person over a FaceTime call, uh, and it will have no lags or anything like that. Now, what's really cool about this technology is when third-party app developers uh, develop their apps to take advantage of this specific SharePlay feature through FaceTime, uh, you can use apps like Netflix and watch Netflix content along with uh, the person that you're FaceTiming with or maybe Apple TV content as well. Either way, you'll be able to uh, kind of experience a lot more with the people you're FaceTiming with now through SharePlay. So go ahead and check it out once you install iOS 15.1. Now, if we go into the settings app, we have a few small changes that we wanted to go over here. And if you go into uh, the phone app, you can see that there is actually a new uh, little icon here at the bottom of the first menu, uh, that being for announce calls. So that icon has now changed from something uh, that we saw in iOS 15, the official version, a very small change there. And if you back out of this menu and then you go into uh, the FaceTime menu, you can see that that icon is reflective there as well, there is a new announce calls feature for FaceTime. So uh, two very small icon changes here within the settings app. 
Now also in settings, if you go into the accessibility menu and then go into the AirPods menu down here in the physical and motor uh, menu, you can see that we do have new options when you select your AirPods Max headphones or AirPods Pro headphones either one with spatial audio. You can see at the very bottom, there's a new toggle here that says spatial audio head tracking. You can turn that on or off. And basically this allows you uh, to uh, follow your iPhone when you track your head movements for spatial audio. It's actually a really trippy, but also really immersive experience. So uh, if you want to experience a, a little bit more immersiveness with your sound, uh, specifically with your AirPods Pro or um, AirPods Max headphones, definitely enable this toggle in the accessibility menu. Now, another place to access this toggle or to access uh, any spatial audio uh, uh, customizations and something new here in iOS 15.1 specifically is if you go into uh, the volume control menu, obviously you have noise control where you can change from transparency to full noise cancellation, then completely off. But on the right, we have a, a spatial audio controls. So if we go into the spatial audio controls, you can have completely off, you can have fixed, or you can have head tracking now that you enabled that feature in the accessibility menu. So you now have three options to choose from, whereas before you only had two. And this is actually really cool. It's a brand new menu here that gives you a very immersive feel into um, how you're controlling everything, and then uh, gives you kind of a representation of exactly how head tracking versus fixed is going to work. So definitely check that out in the control center. Now also in the uh, settings app, specifically if we go down into the camera menu, there's a lot going on in this menu. So now at the bottom of the first menu here, we have a new toggle called show detected text. And basically this was the live text toggle that we saw before. So uh, if you turn this off, if you're in like a camera um, mode or anything like that and you see text, um, if you don't have this enabled, the detected text will not show up on your camera. Um, or that camera app experience. If you have it on, you can uh, go ahead and detect text, select it, and do whatever you want with that text. So um, really it's just a change in what Apple has named this. I don't know why it's changed, but it seems to be a little bit more descriptive in uh, basically saying show the detected text that you have on screen there uh, versus just live text, which really wasn't a descriptive toggle. Now also in this camera settings menu, we have new formats to shoot with, specifically for iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max users. So if you go into formats at the very bottom under the video capture uh, menu, you'll have Apple ProRes. And ProRes basically uh, records uh, more basically more information about the image that you're shooting, which gives you one better quality and two more range to work with when you're editing in post. Now, what's really important is if you are planning on shooting in ProRes, make sure you have a lot of free space. We'll go over exactly how much space is, uh, is required but if you guys have anything less than uh, 512 gigabytes of storage, you're not even going to be able to shoot in 4K 30, uh, which is uh, obviously a very high, uh, very high uh, quality for the iPhone. Now, um, it, as far as like memory usage and everything like that, it's a six gigabytes per minute for 4K and then 1.7 gigabytes per minute for 1080p. So uh, obviously between 1080p and even 4K, uh, we're looking at a lot of uh, storage space being used up by shooting in this ProRes format. So uh, when you enable this toggle here and you go into uh, the camera uh, app itself, if you go over to the video shooting mode, you'll see here at the top left-hand corner, there is an option for ProRes. All you have to do is select ProRes uh, to be uh, enabled, and you actually can't do that if you look at the top right-hand corner, I'm on 4K 60. I have to actually lower this to 4K 30 to enable ProRes. So just keep that in mind if you have 4K 60 turned on, just uh, lower that down to 4K 30 so that you can shoot in that ProRes format. Now, once you have ProRes enabled, uh, it will show you at the top of your screen exactly how much time of recording you have left. Uh, I have 61 minutes and I have about 512 uh, gigabytes of storage available. So uh, you can see that is reflective and will change when I shoot more video. 
Now I do have some examples on screen here for you guys to check out on um, ProRes versus just normal shooting. And if you just look closely at the details, there's a lot more details involved in ProRes shooting. And when I go to edit the footage from ProRes versus the footage straight out of the iPhone, not using ProRes, you can actually manipulate ProRes a lot more, uh, which if you know what you're talking about when it comes to video shooting, uh, you can you obviously know that uh, your editing process isn't going to break down down as much uh, when you have this uh, all this information to work with when shooting ProRes. Now going back into the settings app and more specifically the camera menu, if you go all the way to the bottom of this menu, you now have a new toggle called Auto Macro. And this is for uh, iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max users uh, who want to shoot in macro modes. And just a little bit of an example for you guys, uh, basically this uh, changes your camera experience uh, to detect macro scenes. So if you have a macro scene, your phone will automatically switch into a macro mode, therefore giving you that um, very you know, close up feel for your device. Uh, so you can shoot close objects um, and not have to kind of uh, search for autofocus and everything like that. It's going to put it in the mode so that it's automatically detecting everything closer rather than farther away. Now, Apple does need to work on this feature just a little bit more to fine tune it. But as of right now, as the official release of iOS 15.1 is here, this is actually a very handy and useful feature. And if you have one of the devices I was just talking about that has macro mode shooting, I highly recommend that you have this toggle turned on. Now, one other thing that I wanted to talk about specifically in regards to uh, the video shooting mode for the 13 Pro, Pro Max, and also the 13 and 13 mini devices is cinematic mode uh, in these devices is working a lot better when it comes to auto focus tracking. So in low light, it's working a lot better. And in any light, it's working a lot faster in tracking certain objects. It holds on to them a lot longer. And overall, the cinematic uh, movie shooting mode is actually a lot more uh, kind of tuned in to what uh, video shooters like myself is are looking for in this shooting mode. It's still not perfect, but so far Apple is making huge improvements on this shooting mode and uh, definitely go ahead and check it out. If you had a bad experience before, check it out again. You might be surprised that the cinematic mode is working a lot better. Now, for those of you who want to add uh, COVID-19 vaccines to your Apple wallet, uh, you can go into the health app if you have, um, or if you are located in one of the states I have listed on screen, go into the health app, go into browse, and then go all the way to the bottom to the health records menu. Just go ahead and add your account with whatever uh, service you are using for your health records. And when you sign in, you'll actually have uh, the ability to add that smart health card to your Apple wallet. So it's only available in California, Louisiana, New York, Virginia, Hawaii, and Maryland at the time of shooting this video. Uh, but you can go ahead and add those records uh, to your health app and then move uh, that health record of your COVID-19 vaccination to your Apple wallet so you can quickly access that and show it via a QR code to anyone that is asking for uh, that COVID-19 vaccination card. Now, for those of you uh, HomePod users, you can now enable Dolby Atmos and uh, lossless audio. So if you go into home settings, then go into your user, go into Apple Music, you can enable this here, lossless audio, and then also Dolby Atmos. That is brand new here in iOS 15.1 for the home app, and then also in correlation with HomePod devices. Now, the last thing I wanted to highlight is if you go into the Apple Watch app, uh, Apple has added or basically changed the uh, welcome screen here to include uh, images of the Apple Watch Series 7. A very small change here, uh, but just kind of like fine tuning the updated products um, as they come in for uh, iOS 15.1. This wasn't present on iOS 15 because the Apple Watch hadn't been released yet, but now that it has been, uh, Apple is adding this product image to the Apple Watch app given the Apple Watch Series 7 has now been delivered to customers. Okay, so as far as performance, the general performance isn't really noticeably better than iOS 15, in my own opinion, but we do, however, have a better performance specifically for the iPhone 13 series device owners for features like cinematic mode processing, uh, ProRes exporting has gotten a lot faster over the iOS 15.1 uh, betas, Raw photo processing is a lot faster than what we saw before, and we also see a much faster portrait mode processing experience as well. 
So maybe not what you hope for when it comes to better performance specifically for like all iPhone owners, but given iOS 15 uh, performed so well before, I assumed it was hard to get even more performance out of iOS 15.1 when there were so many other uh, things to improve like new features. Now, as for battery life, battery life is really, really good. So suppose you own uh, one of the new iPhone 13 series devices. In that case, you'll notice that the performance gets you a lot closer to Apple's advertised battery life quotas uh, versus what we were seeing in iOS 15. And even on older devices like the iPhone 11 series devices, you'll see uh, longer battery life as iOS 15.1 is way more efficient than iOS 15. So as for battery life, we are looking at a great improvement here in this release specifically, and is definitely one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to upgrade my own personal device to iOS 15.1. Okay, so moving on to one more thing, and that big question is, when are we going to see iOS 15.2 betas? Well, we can see them as soon as tomorrow, but I don't expect to see them uh, until likely next week and a little bit longer of a beta process than what we saw uh, from iOS 15.1. That will probably push us into the new year. Okay, so that was the official release of iOS 15.1. And of course, if you have any questions about this update or any comments, please leave those in the comment section down below. Of course, if you want to update to iOS 15.1, just go to the software update page in the settings app and you'll find the over there update uh, is available when that comes through to your specific device. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video on the updated YouTube channel. Before you head out, make sure to get subscribed and also hit that notification bell button to stay up to date for when we publish any new content here on the channel. Also, if you want to check out some other things that we have going on, check the channel information link down below. It's solo.to slash updated. You can check out our channel memberships, our merch store, my personal Twitter account, which you should totally follow, and a link to the updated podcast where we have new episodes every single week. That podcast is called The Infinite Loop, and we talk about everything going on in the world of tech. Also, we have links to our giveaways sponsored by awesome companies like Provado VPN, so definitely check those out as well. We'll have a new one every single month. So guys, thank you again for watching today's video and we hope to see you guys in some upcoming content. But until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.